Hey, my name is James, and you're listening to the TCR, you bitch. Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone, to another edition of The Center Ring. TCR for short, also known as your favorite esports podcast. It's like one of three, but let's not get into particulars here. <sighs> we got a great show for you today. Probably the best episode ever. And I know I say that every time, but I really mean it this time. Because we are on episode 50. 5 0. The big 5 0. Some say it's a milestone. I'll let you be the, the decision maker on that. I'll be one of your hosts for this journey. My name is Tim. I'm my two best friends, my two best buds. Oh, that's really nice of you. You mean no it? No problem. No problem. Uh, I mean it for you. Thank you. I appreciate Until it. Until Brett gets into level 21 so we can stop playing non-prime matches. Oh, God, let's not bring that up he right now. He's not my friend. You know what? It's CS's uh, fault for not letting me out of... The road to silver, hell. baby. Let's do it. <clears throat> if you haven't noticed, though, Brett, say hello, Brett. Hello. That's Brett. Anuj, say hello. Hey, guys. You can almost tell he's Indian through the mic. Can you? No, you definitely sound white. No, no. Don't no, worry about you're, it. You're definitely white. I would hope so. Definitely white. Anyways, TCR here, coming at you live, pre-recorded. The date, what is the date? February 15th, 2017. It is exactly 9.15 p.m. Central Time. I said it earlier, episode 50. It is a milestone. And uh, I don't know. I just wanted to say thank you to, to all the listeners. Thank you guys for joining us. Episode 50. It was a huge deal. And so when we first started the podcast, it kind of... Oh, so originally, and I don't even know if you two know this. When me and Brandon, who has passed away, he's no longer with us, which is why he's no longer doing the show. Uh, we were originally set out to do one episode every other week. Like, we were like, you know what? We don't make money doing this. We're just doing it because we love esports. Let's just do one episode every other week. Like, Surely we can come up with enough esports to talk about one episode every other week. It's not time consuming that way and whatever. We can still keep our, our free time. And then we started doing it and we realized like, man, there's too much to, to talk about if we're just doing one every other week. Like we discussed it in the dinner today that eventually we are, we are going to do two episodes a week. Can't wait. Yeah. Like we, we're going to eventually do that. There's just too much. There's too much. I mean, between roster moves and and anything, right? Overwatch had big roster moves this last week. We weren't here last week to do the episode, so now we're like two weeks behind. And there's some roster moves that are completely irrelevant now, like, you know, Hiko leaving Liquid or getting removed from Liquid and it joining Optic. Like, that's almost old news now, and that was only like a week and a half ago. The French Shuffle was what, like six, seven weeks ago, it feels like now? It feels like it, but it really was just last week, right? Yeah, last yeah. week. So it's crazy, and so eventually we will do that. But I am definitely proud to be at episode 50. It's nice knowing that we hit a milestone. Another milestone we hit, which is, I think, a pretty amazing, and this is to you, the listener, and all credit, though. I don't give the listeners any credit for getting us to 50. Like, that's all us. 100%. Like, like, and I've been here for, what, three? Yeah, you've been, I mean, the show's been on your back, but before the listener gets too cocky, I just want to say, like, you didn't do anything. Like, none. we're here doing the show. Regardless of if you listen, we would still be here doing the show. So that's whatever. Damn, shots but, fired. But what I can thank the listener for is getting us to 10,000 downloads. In 49 episodes, we got, we hit the milestone of 10,000 downloads. So again... Thank you from all of us here at TCR for that. And yes, I know Richard Lewis gets 10,000 in like the first hour of posting a video. Let's ignore that. Okay. We're just going to ignore that part and be happy about us. 
Ten thousand sounds like a big number. It is a big number, especially when you think forty-nine episodes. We're a bunch of no names. We're just here doing it for the love of the esports and podcasts, right? We're just doing it because it's fun for us. We won't all... even believe how much we're making per episode at oh, this point. It is. Oh, yeah. Let's not even talk numbers. On a match, so many zeros. So many. Nothing in front of those zeros, but they just the zeros go on for days and days. But I, I did want to thank everyone again. 10,000, so milestone episode 50, 10,000 downloads. Thank you very much for that. Continue supporting the show, and we'll continue producing semi-decent content worth listening to. I promise that. And share it. Share it on Twitter, at The Center Ring. Let people know what's up. But let's get into what the show is about today. We have a special Clutcher Kick. For those who don't know what Clutcher Kick is, it's our favorite game show where I basically present everyone with a list of topics and we decide whether or not they clutch the round and can stay another day or if they fail miserably and we kick them out never to be seen from again. It's basically, is if it's important enough to pay attention to is what it boils down to. We have our generic CSGO talk here. Like I said earlier, tons of roster moves. You got the DreamHack Masters going on right now in Vegas. Uh, Katowice's groups were announced. We'll touch on it. We won't get too far into that just because we got another two or so weeks before that. And then, as always, though, let's start the show off with some e-news. E-news is, for those who don't know, it is episode 50, so I'm hoping just through all the shares we get new listeners. E-news is our daily or our weekly or episodely <laughs> segment where we basically read the headlines from some stories that we really wish we had the time to talk to and talk about but let's face it we don't or we just don't care enough to to dedicate an entire segment to let me scroll up here oh my god okay we got some things going on here okay call of duty recently had its mlg atlanta which by the way was the first time mlg was back in atlanta in a long time i think i saw somewhere on twitter like since like oh seven maybe Atlanta's getting a lot of the big tournaments now. Look at that. It is, back which to is back. which is a bit odd because, well, I mean, I guess it's not odd. It's it's just I guess worked it's, out that way. Yeah, it's, it it's worked good. out that way. But yeah. MLG used to go, always go to Atlanta, so I guess that's why I think it's odd that it was. It's been so long since them. But furthermore, so Call of Duty had its uh, COD World League going on in MLG Atlanta, where E United wins. Okay, E United. Anuj, you made a note in the pre-show that they're completely rookie team. Rookie team. They ended up beating, I would almost say, a CS, or not a CSGO, a COD eSports favorite in Optic Gaming. Like, Optic Gaming started in Call of Duty. And fun fact, and I read this in their book that I didn't finish reading because I was too hurt when they denied my interview request. But they started out as like a sniper clan. Like, that's what they were. Like just Optic everyone, makes everyone. Sense. That's where they got the optics yeah. from. Wait, wait, wait. Hopping in. No, no, no. Optic started as a sniper clan. For COD. Optic gaming. You're thinking of an op, like in Counter Strike. No, 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 no. Like a s- s- rifle, right? Yeah. Sniper rifle. Yeah. That is the worst. Like it was just a team that did crazy trick shots and kills with snipers. That's what Phase started off as too, kind of right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, they kind of broke the scene in, yeah. in COD as well. Uh, but no, Optic Gaming uh, actually had a pretty impressive run there where they came all the way from the loser's bracket, having to defeat Elevate, PNDA, FaZe, Luminosity, and Envious, making it all the way to the grand finals, only to lose to E United, which E United also, not in Call of Duty, but in Overwatch, signed former Reunited, which is former We United. So that is Jeez. not planned. It's just. I say that three times. Generic fast, huh? naming by esports organizations. So E United has had a very, very busy week on their hands. Uh, Pavel wins the Hearthstone Europe Winter Playoffs. There is not a chance either of you watched that. So I won't even pretend like you did. I caught the last few minutes. Yeah, I bet you did. He looked very <laughs> unexcited to win. It was actually, it's quite entertaining to watch Eastern Europeans win things because they're just like chess players <laughs> just, just like. so emotionless it's like did he win or lose i i can't even tell i can't even tell we're going to talk more about this but it's in the e-news section here so i'm going to read it as roma teams up with Fnatic for their fifa team awesome 
So we're going to talk more specifically about that and clutch your kick and as far as what what our thoughts are but then nonetheless that's there uh getting an overwatch rogue re relocates to las vegas so that's you know i don't know dangerous fun no yeah dangerous dangerous and fun at the same time i oh, love yeah. vegas take that for what you will and sticking with overwatch i ddqd signs with nrg damn which for an esports scene that uh i, I it's not struggling Overwatch definitely has a prominent esports scene, and I can't wait till it's bigger so like we can start following it more and not Apex Season 2, which happens at the crack of dawn here where we work and we can't really watch it. But that is a huge signing for NRG. We discussed last episode, when will we see in Counter-Strike the switch from Europeans willing to play in North American teams? Well, this is one. IDDQD played for Fnatic before he you know left and now is on uh nrg like so he, all off going to splice hmm, nah. i don't know if it's that drastic <laughs> let's i mean you do have nrg is like the one of the top yeah. na teams there because you have like seagulls on that team and adding iddq who is one of the i mean in my opinion the best mccree he's top rated tracer that's going to make nrg all it's, the more it's fun to watch yeah. So that that will be interesting to see once I can finally watch Overwatch matches, not at five a.m. Six o'clock in the morning. I'm I'm up, but I'm not watching counter, uh, not watching Overwatch at six o'clock. No, morning. and look, we can talk about the meta in Overwatch, which I think eventually we will, uh, when when we just have the time, because right now the meta in Overwatch is completely blown up kill the four tank meta please. you don't like it no i hate it really it's not it's not fun it's not fun well maybe the i don't mind it but i play tank yeah like i i main a tank mo most of the time so i guess it's not as big a deal for me i don't know i i i like the fact though like watching professional overwatch right now those pros are very being very liberal with the new meta where it's like, you want to see a Torb? On Hanamura, you're going to see a Torb. You know, you want to see a Bastion. I think with the new Bastion upgrades, you're going to see more Bastions because they're trying to make him more, in my opinion, mobile with his healing and everything like that. It's just, it's blown up. You, you will see every hero, whether or not they're useful. I, I think that's a interesting debate that we can even have at another time as just a discussion point of, in games like Overwatch or in Dota or League, uh, don't freak out. We're not going to talk about League, so don't don't freak out. Oh my god! <laughs> but does every does every hero need to be relevant? No, I mean, which I know, like it, as Blizzard as like the the makers of it, yes, they want every hero to be relevant. I'm sure Blizzard would love to see nothing more than every hero have the same play time across the board. Because then you have a perfectly balanced, fun game. But you're never going to knock out Lucio. You're never going to knock out Reinhardt. They will always be top tier meta. Mm -hmm. So Every character needs to have a way to contribute onto a team, though. Nobody should be irrelevant. Now, you're not going to get equal play time across the right. board. Well, that's just like look at Torb, right? He is only useful in very unique situations. Yeah, I've, I've seen Bastion used when it's... Uh, when it's tied and you have to push the if you have to push the point like you only have a minute left and you need to push the point as far as you can you go back to that original meta of uh, you know With Reinhardt, the Reinhardt Bastion, and the Bastion and the see point. if you get those picks and you know just push the payload that's the only time I've ever seen him really but if they can find a way he's you know four tanks are ridiculous it. yeah we'll we'll have to say let's table this for another episode down the road because i really do would love to break down overwatch meta and even talk the like we said earlier is it even relevant to have every hero be relevant so i definitely want to talk about that but before we'll table that for an episode down the road okay we have a ton of csgo to get to now i'm not going to talk about every roster move that happened within the last two weeks because that'd be redundant and ridiculous and i don't think anyone cares Kind of crazy how much has happened. It, well, right, but it's like, I mean, what, do you want to sit here and talk about every little thing? You know, the French shuffle finally happened. I will be the first to admit that I even said on this show I'd be surprised if it did, and it did, just because they've been... T 
and like no joke for over a year now this french shuffle has supposed to have been happening after every tournament and go figure all these happen after majors which it just happens if for whatever reason teams they try to it, it's almost like when a, a couple on shaky grounds are like you know what we need to do we need to go on vacation this take that th- month off yeah take let's take a couple weeks off and let's go on vacation it will fix us it will fix this this bond and then teams do that with majors they're like no you know what we need we need a boot camp and go to this major and travel together and that will you know that will re-energize our our bond and it never works out because after every major you see these ridiculous roster shuffles and moves uh, VP still stands on the outskirts laughing at everyone, making fun of them on Twitter. And we we end up here where, I mean, let, I, I just want to look at my notes. So we have Hiko, who was replaced by Stannis. Stannis Law on Liquid, which we talked about on our last episode. And I swear to God that people might have listened to episode 49 and thought we were morons. That literally broke, like, not even. Like, by the time we left the station and got home, I called Anuj and I was like, you'll never believe what I see on the front page of Reddit. I was like, everything we just talked about for the last hours is pointless. To our credit, we mentioned in that episode that watch, as soon as we leave... Oh, it happens every time. It's going to happen. It I Just wait till this one's posted. Something's going to happen. It happens every time. It's esports, man. They, they They don't know how to just chill. Uh, you had the French Shuffle, as we mentioned earlier. You have the Fanatic Boys getting back together to um, almost its original roots, if you want to include Pronax and two there. Um, but you, you have the main group back together. The core team that won yeah, all those majors together. Right. And now, most recently, which I kind of want to start with here, because I, I feel like it it's the most relevant and most discussion point worthy, and that is Nico joining phase. And you heard me correct, Nico joining FaZe. Yeah, I know he said like ten days ago that he uh, trust him, right? It wasn't even it wasn't even ten days, right? I think it was like nine days after he. It was right after they kissed. Yeah, kicked so, Chris J. Yeah, so rewind a little bit. Last episode we talked about it where Mouse Sports removed Chris J from the team, and that was all Nico's decision making. And he even said, "Hey, trust me." I want Mouse Sports to succeed. I need the fans to be behind me on this. I know what I'm doing. I'm here for the team. Fast forward nine days later, the news breaks that Scream did not work out with FaZe. He did not. Apparently, Scream was the one who said no to FaZe. And they signed Nico. For what started to be rumored around a million, I heard when I heard it first break, it was like, what, 800 to 1 million. And now we're finding out it was closer to 500,000, which is still insane. Ridiculous. The one, I think the one, the last, or the next biggest one other than this one was when uh, Titan sold Scream for like 160K. Which was at the time. Or uh, vice versa, sorry. Yeah, G2 yeah. sold Scream to Titan. Am I saying that right? G2 bought Scream from Titan. Sure, for man. Like 160K. We'll probably never know. There's no way someone can fact check us on this. There was a transaction that involved <laughs> Scream, and it was 160000 Yeah, that was to go to G2 from Titan. Are we sure? No. 50-50. I'm going to talk about this. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Either way, the point we're getting at yeah. is it was the second largest, or the, at the time, the largest transaction it looked like for a buyout for a player, and people were going crazy that it was that high. We're already double that just, what, a year later? A year and a half later? And we're at 500k yeah, about for a, a year. buyout. It's it's getting ridiculous now. And we even said like eventually you're gonna have to have long term contracts because people are not gonna be buying people out for a million dollars, which is gonna be the next one, you know, and it and not have it. Depends on how they run it though. Hey, because if if they're gonna run it like soccer, soccer has buyouts. They have contracts and they have buyouts. Like you can loan a player though, which is different there. Yeah. Right? But I mean, you I'm telling you, you you get all of these, you know high profile owners and investors money's about to get thrown around like crazy because we're we're at the forefront i mean this is it's becoming huge like it's just in its infancy right now it's about to get big which you know this this probably won't be the biggest you by can the already end of the see year, right? with contract money how much these guys are getting paid 
I have it really right here. 500 isn't uh So G2 sold him to Titan. Titan folded and then G2 bought him back or they picked him back up. So I remember that. Yeah, because it was free? like a crazy like within like 3 month period G2 just played everyone and basically got the roster back after they just made 160k off of him. But no, I think my so here's my thing with the whole Nico the Nico roster move. And I know, I think I'm in the minority just looking off of like how the internet perceived it and saying like, well, good for Hiko. It's about time he gets on another team. I don't disagree there. I think he was definitely way too good for mouse sports. Like he made a tier two team into a tier one, right? I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. I mean, I I watched him tournament after tournament after tournament. You, You could just see on his face. It was starting to wear on him. Well, I think Thorne said it, uh, I'm loosely quoting Thorne here, but he basically said like normal teams, you know, you, you would have a carry and if they perform well, then you're, you're good. Nico was mouse sports carry. And yet he still had to play out of his mind yeah. to even qualify for a major, let mm. alone either make it out of playoffs or not at all. Like he had to drop 40 bombs or get crazy D Eagle aces just to even have a chance. He had a three month stretch where he was the best player in the world last year, where he was most, it was by far the best player. And it came after some of these injuries with Olaf and all these guys happened. And he stepped up and kind of put the scene on his back and took over as the, the best player in the world there for a while. Now, this is though where it sits, it sits poorly with me. I have, this is where I have issue with how this was handled. Okay. And I, I don't blame Mouse Sports for this because look, when your best player is going to leave, you're going to have to get something for him, right? You're you're going to sell him before he just walks. So by all means, get, get your money while you can. But this whole picture was painted for a little bit that Nico is mouse sports. He is German CSGO and the fact that, you know, he trust him, right? He kicked off Chris J, trust him. Mouse sports CEO said this, and I found it very interesting. After the major, Nico approached us with the wish to join FaZe. We agreed. It was time to search for a solution that would benefit everyone involved. We worked out one of the biggest transfers in esports to date, referring back to that 500,000. So if I'm going off of what the CEO of Mouse Sports said, the timetable is after the major, Nico went to the team and said, hey, I want off. I want to go to FaZe or wherever. And then even after going to the team and requesting to be traded or bought out, he still went ahead and and ruffled the feathers by removing Chris J. Like, why did you put out the statement? Yeah, like, why even, if you knew you were trying to get kicked off the team or whatever, moved in the background, why even start that mess? Like, it just seems so irrelevant and pointless and kind of a slap in the face to, in my opinion, to, like, Chris J, where it's like, so now he Chris J's coming back, but he's not the opper. Oscar is still going to be the opper. I assume he's going to... Yeah, well, and then Chris J is supposed to rifle. We'll see how long that goes. Is Chris J going to get his IGL rights back? You know, it's just creating a mess. Like, I feel like Nico created a mess in out in mouse sports for something that could have been avoided. I feel but like it. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to take anybody at their word anymore, right? There because every big story has its own side. I mean, it, like PEA. Going back to PEA, I mean, every, every 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 big story has two sides, just opposite sides uh, sides of the spectrum, and you don't know who to believe. I mean, it's just hearsay, right? I mean, how do we know that Nico went up to, you know, the owner of Mouse Sports was like, "Hey, I went out." Oh, and then you know, a day later, I'm gonna make it known that, "Hey, I'm gonna make yeah, Mouse Sports I mean, great it, again." It could very well be that the CEO of Mouse Sports was like, "No." You're you're stuck with us, and you're going to be the roster. And then all of a sudden, he pitched the idea to FaZe, and FaZe was like, how about uh, 500? And then Money talk. Yeah, exactly. But I think the organization had to be somewhat involved in the moving of Chris J off the team initially because Oscar's the better player, and that's going to help them long term. I think bringing him back on ended up just being the result of you know, Nico, Nico leaving until they possibly find a replacement well, and, there. And keep in mind, too, um, I mean, it's semantics on however you want to word it, but Chris J was not removed. He was benched, right? Yeah. So he was still yeah. had, the, they still had his rights. So, I mean, what's he going to do, right? You're not going to be like, 
I'm not going to play. Like Rubino on North, he's still on North, even though he's not on the active roster. Right. So the first time we will see Nico in a phase uniform will be at the Intel Masters in Katowice, which is two weeks. I believe they start March 1st or March 2nd. Yeah, first week of March. Yeah. So we'll we'll see there. FaZe is going to be a scary team, though, between yeah. Nico, Kerrigan. I mean, FaZe was already on the up and up. And yeah. then you go ahead and add Nico. I am... It will be interesting to see how Nico does, though, because it's kind of like, uh, don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a great player, but it's also to look like a, a better player when you're playing on a team of worse. It may, be, it may be the opposite, though, because maybe he doesn't feel like he has to force, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to do too much. He can just kind of play his own game, you know, and, and not have to worry about being the carry every day because, like I said, he is going to a roster that, that has some really good players, so... My two cents on this, I think it's a perfect move because you have Kerrigan being the IGL, who's polished, he's savvy, he knows what he's doing. Now he can rely on Nico on the other side of the map, who's also been an IGL, to rely on him to make calls for him on the other side of the map. And it really opens up what they're able to do. I mean, you essentially have two IGLs, one of them being potentially the best player in the world. You have a lot of firepower on that team. I mean, with, with, Rain is incredible. I mean, he's just incredible out there. So I think this is a huge, huge win for FaZe. I mean, this is a, a move that I think will take them, you know, into it easily. A competitive top five team consistently, even pushing top three with, with that kind of firepower. And I think out of all the roster moves that happened in the last two weeks, I think this is the one that's going to have the least amount of, of learning curve to it. Like, I think the French shuffle, that might take a while before you start seeing players really feel comfortable and look normal. Yeah, because you're adding three right. three players. Well, and I think there's just more drama behind that one. I think there's a lot more drama layered into the French shuffle where this was, you're getting one of the best players in the world joining your team. Like, you're you're probably going to be quickly, more quicker to adapt to that. Well, and FaZe has been playing well. You know, they played well right. with the major. That's where right. The French teams both didn't make it out of groups, you know, in the major. So they have to learn to play together where now you're just integrating one of the best players in the game onto your team. That's a lot easier to do to bring Michael Jordan on than bring on three bench players and try to make it work. And so. Right. Yeah. To to yeah. add on to your point, I think what you what you said, Anuj, was, is exactly correct where FaZe was a was a good team that got better where the French teams were bad teams that had to mix it up. Are they better? I don't know. You know, like, for example, everyone's freaking out because Scream joined Envious. Scream was on G2, too. Yeah. And look what happened. Nothing. And Envious won, what, two games that they played him already? Right. Yeah. Oh, um, man, and he's gone and, off and Scream on Scream looked incredible, Ooh. so still think it was a bad move for them not to include him on the team. I think it... There had to be something. Yeah, Maybe they said NBK to work with. They said NBK didn't want him on the team. He doesn't like his his play style, and he's mentioning that came from an interview a year or so ago where NBK said, "Hey, you know, he's a great player, but he's a flashy player, and he doesn't do things the way that he would want a teammate to play." So it came up a year ago, and you think that maybe carries over. And considering NBK had a lot of pull on this team, um, of how it shaped out, but not picking up Scream was. I think a mistake for them. Right. The French shuffle, I'm still, the, the jury's still out for me. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Hiko, where, man, that's another traveler of rosters. That dude has been on, I think, every, I mean, unless you count like TSM and stuff, but any of the premier NA teams that dude has been on. He's been on Cloud9. He's been on Liquid. He's been on Optic. Complexity. Complexity. Yeah. Uh, I think he was on Selfless if, for a little bit. He's been, he's been uh, he's, around. He's, he's been, been around, on, yes. But I, I think this is going to work out better, this Optic move, because Optic, they have the players there that are veteran, and they know, like, they're not going to take his BS. No, right? and I think even I mean, just because, from, it's a sh- it's a small sample size, but I feel like they've really, yeah. And, they look good And he's, yeah, he's already good. said, he's already said, you know, I've never played so much CS in my life. Like, no, I, I'm telling you, sure. he's not going to be able to, he's not going to be able to get away with the stuff on liquid that he is with uh, optic because optic, you know, they have, they have rush, which I think he's a good leader. Uh, they got Tarek, who's a big personality. They're not going to, they're not going to optic. <laughs> is at a good point? <laughs> why, why do you do it? 
I was doing anything. Dude, whatever, man. But no, no, no. I, I, I think it's a good move for him because there's other big personalities on this team. There's other people and, to carry the workload with him. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I hope it works out. I also hope it kind of humbles him. Yeah. That's and, and that's another thing. Yeah. He's at the end. He's getting towards the end of his career. He and wants he to knows win. it. And yeah. he, the dude has been on a lot of roster moves, which me being the, the drama queen that I am brings up the question of why. You know, it, it has been shot around a few times that he is difficult to deal with. He is big headed. And w- I don't think it will change. But apparently Brett does. I think it will. I, I honestly, I think this is this is the best NA team he could have landed on because they have the established players there and they have the personalities that won't take his won't take his BS. Hiko, I respect him because he always wanted to make the NA super team for a long time. That's after, right after he left Cloud Nine. His whole goal was to make the NA super team and it fell through because you had the ban that took place with IVP at that point. Skadoodle went on to then join Cloud9, and he kind of got left sitting in the dirt at that point trying to figure out what to do until Liquid came around and and picked him up. So I always like the fact that he wanted the super team. You know, instead of the way the NA is split now, you have a bunch of average Tier 1 teams, um, but you never got the best five together at any point. And that was always his main goal, knowing, you know, I have maybe one or, you know, not too many more years to go in the sport. So... I always respected the you know respected him for that, and I, I hope they do well here with G two or Optic. It's you know it's off to a good start as of today at least. And on the flip side of getting back a super team, you have Fnatic, who the rumor was before the major that no matter what the results were, you were going to get the band back together and they were going to play there. It's been a mixed bag of results. I uh, I felt like when right when they change happened, they were doing fine, and then today they lost to Gambit. Which is not a, a bad team, but I think it's all like, the hype behind them, you would you would have thought better. That's a damn good team. Like uh, Gambit. Like I, I looked at their most recent matches. I mean, they hadn't lost a match in a long, long time. Well, since they lost to Fnatic in yeah. E League, is you know they lost that that Fnatic's the one that beat them in E League, right? And mm-hmm. then they made the roster change, and now they lose to them in their f- first time together. It's it's early. I don't think you're gonna see one of those things where. You know, we're reunited and we're back to the same level because CS has gotten better. Well, since they yeah, were they when they were the when they were the top. I mean, look at how fast SK was able to come in and, yeah. and take it. And now look at SK. Even SK is not even like revered as as what what they what they're not the were. blind number no, one. No, yeah, you, know. you, you and look even at Astralis. You... Mm-hmm. Like I know Astralis dominated <laughs> the major, and yeah, they they look like number one. But even then, you're like I. I could see them not being a favorite. You're not going to be surprised if they get booted by a, a Navi, a VP. Right. You know, there's teams out there. Um, there's there's parity. Yeah, which I like. No, it, it Counter Strike's in a really good place right now, um, and that's why it's so easy to talk about so much. You know, I feel like we we do talk about Counter Strike a lot, but it's because the level of play and competition in in Counter Strike is is incredible right now. You have five or six teams that compete for number one and that you feel like could win on a, you know, on any day basis with them. So the Fnatic move will be good. Um, I think it'll be fun to get the band back together. I know you're happy about it. Here, Here's the deal. Once a volatile relationship, always and a volatile relationship. That is relationship. my opinion. I think this is <laughs> such a... I'm not... Sure, like I, I like Fnatic being back together, whatever. It's, it's good for the sport. Sure, whatever. I'm still not... A, I don't like roster moves. I think they happen way too often, and I, I definitely go with the VP style. Um, but I... So, let's see. The, the, they split up in August of 2016. They're back together now. What's that? Six months? Yeah, yeah six give months. Give or take? About a half a year, yeah. Okay, so it took six months for them to be like, gee, I, I guess what what was quoted then, and I could show you here, it's they said... And I quote, and this was on the Fanatics website, over the last month, something similar has been brewing inside of our team. And regardless of the efforts of all parties that have tried to make to resolve the internal issues, it has reached a point to where there's a clear division within the team. And that was on Fanatics website back in August. They, it was so bad that the arguably number one or number two team in the world, in every major, in every tournament, couldn't get through internal issues. 
Like, they were a dynasty. Yeah, yeah like so. for, for whatever reason, Fnatic getting third or fourth place was just the end of the world, and it drives me insane to where an esports third or fourth warrants you blowing up your team. Yeah, yeah but it's like, welcome back, Fnatic. Oh, have you met uh, Astralis? And there's this team called o, you know, Optic Gaming over here that's up and coming. I mean, they're not the Yankees anymore. It, there's too much parody. And I, I would like to see what happens in this DreamHack tournament if they just get knocked out. Because they they look terrible in that match today. And if they just lose out, oh boy. I have uh, a quote here that just enrages me from Flusha. And this kind of started when the rumors started that they were getting back together. Here's Flusha saying, Players from other teams would ask me if there was any truth in the rumors. I would feel that it was not out of curiosity, but rather fear that they were asking. I know now that we had a very special combination of players. I've learned that now, and the other teams have every right to be afraid. Please, just stop. Stop, <laughs> Flusha. Don't come at me after, after they've kicked and screamed and got what they wanted twice. All right, you First, your internal issues back in August, you left the team and went to Godsent. So Godsent didn't work out because you gave it a, a total of five months to prepare. And oh, mind you, within those five months, it's also the slowest season of CSGO, which is the holidays, where there's no tournaments for, you know, a month or two. So it's like, well, so what, what sample size do you have in that? Other than what? You missed your friends? I think they missed the publicity also, though, right? They were like the hottest thing in town. You had JW yeah. opening up a store and... These guys were like the hot topic at that point. They screwed it up. I said no, it back in August when they split up that they that was a dumb decision. They screwed up. Here's the deal. They hate losing because in CS, losing just invites toxic behavior, right? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, have, I have a recording from earlier today that I'm about to play. I have a yeah, pretty right. good attitude when I lose. No, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, last. yeah, I mean, it, it just invites. So be excited for a month or two. It'll all be over soon. <laughs> we'll guys. see. We'll see. I don't know. You I know what? I you really know. think it was funny that when they split up the first time in Godsent and Fnatic, we're basically the same performance wise, right? Godsent maybe didn't have his better placings, but skill wise, I felt like Twist on Fnatic was, was up. I mean, I, I'm one of the better players. Yeah. In like, I think. The, he definitely used his time at a better spotlight of a team. Like, Twist really took advantage of that, and I could see him not on Godsent for very long. Yeah. Unless Godsent just turns it around. NIP needs somebody. NIP needs a lot. You watch your mouth. They have been rough. Who won the match today between them and Cloud9? We're not going to talk about that. I didn't see the score. Well, that's, that's CSGO. Like I said, tons of stuff happening. We'll get into IEM Katowice next week uh, just because that will be put us a week before it actually starts. So we'll break down the groups. They're doing it in an interesting way. Two groups of eight teams. So rather than kind of splitting it up, it's I like those bigger groups that, that they do. But before we, we run this episode so long, I definitely want to get into clutch or kick. <laughs> And welcome to everyone's favorite game show here on the center ring. Clutch or Kick. It's the show where I will deliver to you, Anuj and Brett, a handful of crafted topics by myself. Mainly that just brings up the question, is this important or not? Does it clutch the round? Does it stay to play another? Or does it fail miserably and get embarrassed and kicked out, never to be seen or heard from again? The rules are simple. Just tell me clutch or kick. We can discuss the topics. There are no wrong answers. So why don't we get into the first one here. Where do you want to start? I'll let you guys kind of be the, the decisions maker here. Want to start just, older news? We'll just start with the boycott. All right. Let's start with the boycott then. The boycott. A couple weeks ago, in control, a former CS, or not CS, uh, StarCraft pro, 
for EG made a YouTube video, basically a history of, if you will, for EG. And he mentioned a fun fact that the reason EG hasn't had a CSGO team in a while is mainly because they were being threatened by other bigger organizations saying, if you, if you guys sign a CSGO team, we're boycotting Twitch. The reason this was a big deal, because back then, EG was actually partly owned by Twitch. So the fear was, is that if Twitch is owning a team, then they can control their, their media output, right? Put them on the front page of Twitch, show them more often, you know, put them at the front, make them a featured stream every time. And this set poorly with some teams specifically one that, uh, in control reference to was, uh, the CEO of, of cloud nine who's been involved in some shady stuff before. Um, one that comes to mind is PEA, right? The Cloud9 was also part of them where the owners kind of went behind the players' backs and did all this business behind them. And the Cloud9 CEO was was kind of in the forefront of that story. So I'm, I'm starting to think maybe he's just not a nice person. Eventually, there, uh, there's a common denominator. <laughs> right, yeah. If you <laughs> keep getting brought up in these stories, maybe it's you. Unless you want to come on the show and do an interview, then then it's definitely not you, and not we would you. love to have you. Totally and I not. totally Anytime. agree, man. Go Cloud Anytime. Nine. Go Cloud Nine. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna guess on how you say his name. Etinia. I have no idea. Uh, but the CEO of Cloud Nine took to Reddit because what other professional way to do it other than posting on Reddit? And of course, he was denying the claim, saying that In Control wasn't really privy to all the information, which I totally believe. You know, I'm, I'm sure a, a player is not privy to as much information as a an owner would directly related to it. Um, but this is where it kind of gets interesting. He says that EG was going to sign a CSGO roster made up of ex iBuy power players until several of them were banned for the match fixing incident. What's the match Awkward. fixing incident? <laughs> yeah. Can we, uh, can we talk about <laughs> can we, this? Can we talk about Recap. It? Yeah. So, so he drops that little nugget in there saying, no, no, they were going to. But, you know, remember Steel and all them that everyone says needs to play again? They were going to sign them, but they got banned. And that kind of spoiled EG's return to CSGO. Uh, he even says that they did sign a CSGO roster, but the players were banned from iBuy Plower before it was announced. So he's even saying, like, behind the closed doors, everything was done. They were EG, but then they got banned before they ever announced it. And they were under like a fake name uh, that so people wouldn't know like that it was EG's roster. Like they used fake names to kind of get around everything. Since then, Evil Genius and Twitch are no longer related to each other. They've kind of slowly been distancing themselves more and more. So I ask you, Anuj. Does this story clutch or kick? Kick. Easy, Ooh. easy kick here. Let me tell you why. Tell me why. EG and Twitch, like you said, are no longer associated. So not a big deal there. It annoys me a little bit that other organizations tried to get involved in their business. But I think at the end of the day, they would have done what they wanted to do. If IBP had been available, I think that would have happened the way you said. Look. IVP is still running Twitch anyway, okay? Days and Steel are still pretty much on the top of streams as they're happening. I think it's just a dead story that is, is not gonna... I don't I don't see us talking about it again. Brett, clutch or kick? I'm also a kick. Whoa. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, it, it's CSGO drama... Happens all the time. It, it, it'll always be there, right? It happens all the and, time, and people will and, water and I am under the booting brain. the hell out of this thing because it, it you don't know who to believe in CS anymore. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah, and you it, know, like, I will say this: the way the story was written makes it seem like In Control was trying to be all vicious with his claims. Yeah. He really wasn't. It was more or less like just a story time, and this was part of the story. But like he know, wasn't trying to get anyone in trouble. You know what? EG probably still. 
made out pretty good because what if they sign those IBP players and then the scandal happens and then it's their name being drugged and through the mud. I buy power. And not I buy power, by, which, by the way, is it? Do, do they? Uh, no, they don't. No, they don't, they don't have, have a team, team anymore, but they still host CSGO tournaments. So it, it clearly hasn't like affected yeah. them it, that much. It Not only did they host, but they brought one of the players. The, uh, Steel was on the cast, wasn't he? Or was it, it was Days. It was Days. Days yeah. yeah. On, he was part of the talent of that tournament. It's like, d dude, y this is your first, like, welcome back. You know, everyone's forgot about it, and you're going to bring days. I agree. I, I also say kick, mainly for the reason of, look at all the other drama that's happened in esports, like the betting scandals, right, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden no one cares about anymore. The, the fixing scandals. Again, no one really cares about it. It's more of a meme at this point than anything. And this is nothing, right? It's in control, said it. CEO of Cloud9 was like, nah, didn't happen like that. And we kind of have already moved on from it. So I, I agree with, with both of you. It's just a kick. It's This is dead. We'll, we'll move on. Because at this point, EG, if they wanted to, they could have they, they could have gotten a team between then and now. Yeah. Blizzard announces a Hearthstone tournament featuring 48 international teams. The inaugural Hearthstone Global Games will be featuring players from around the globe competing for their country for a prize pool of $300,000. 48 different countries will be competing, each represented by a four-player team. First members of each team will be top-ranked players from that country, while others will be there being fan-voted in or community-voted in. No dates have been announced yet for the Global Games. Brett, I'll start with you. Clutch your kick. Don't know much about Hearthstone, but I'm going to clutch this because anything that has to do with like a national feel, like countries playing, you know, players playing for the country, I'm in. Like, I mean, I get hype for the World Cup. I get hype for, you know, other national tournaments where, you know, there's some pride involved. So, you know what? I may give Hearthstone a, a chance. I may watch a little bit because of that country aspect. I like it. I dig it. Anuj. I'm going to go with Kick again here. I do like the fact that it's hosted at Hogwarts this year. That's exciting to see. I'm not, I'm just not big into Hearthstone. So I don't know. I think it's good for the esports scene as a whole that, hey, this is like a growing sport and prize pool of 300,000. That seems pretty damn good for Hearthstone, right? right? Like right. you're playing some cards here. That's, that's awesome. I've just, um, man. I'm just not a, a follower. I'm not a believer yet. You know, drag you in? Not yet. You know, maybe when it gets to the main stage, I'll dive in a little bit more with you here. Especially because Hearthstone at the current state is a bit shaky. Pros have even spoken out against the meta and the fact that it changes too much. Like Blizzard is doing too much to try to make everyone kind of a a balanced player. That yeah. it's taking away a lot of the skill thinking of the game. I'm on the fence. I want to say clutch because it's Blizzard. And Blizzard is, they won't let any game die. You know, I'll look at Heroes of the Storm. Look at WoW. Look at WoW. Some of those games should be dead, but yet when the World Championship of the WoW Arena comes on, guess who's watching it? This guy. And, but it's literally just for the World Championship. I'm going to say Clutch. Only because of Blizzard. The fact that there's no dates announced worries me, because look at the Overwatch League. That was announced a long time ago. I think at BlizzCon last year. So it's been a while since they announced this Overwatch League that's supposed to like have teams assigned and there's actual drafts and all that. And yet, nothing. Nothing has been said about it for months. I will say, but I will say clutch because I do want to keep an eye on just how Blizzard operates it. Let's get an update on the score. Brett, you said kick to... What was the original story? Oh. The boycott. The in-control... E.G. Boycott, but kick or clutch to Hearthstone. Anu just kick on both. Kick on both. Buzzkill. I feel negative, though, now. I will say, Brett, your score? A six. Anuj, yours? A nine. Well, I'm demanding a recount. How's this, how's this scored? Let me worry about the rule, sir. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I want to go over to here, which is big controversy. Big controversy coming up here with ESL. 
as they partner with former Fox Sports exec for major tournaments. Former, former Fox TV and Fox Sports executive David Hill was hired to help special projects through his production studio, Hilly. Uh, ESL is to train production teams on television practice, or he will help ESL train production teams on television practices and securing top announcer talents. He wants to find gaming's answer to Joe Buck and Terry Bradshaw. Really interesting uh, names to pick there. I'm like, okay, Joe Buck, I get that. Terry Bradshaw, huh? He's like Charles Barkley, man. We, we're like, we need to find a Terry Bradshaw. I, I was unaware that was important. ESL wants Hill to help bring TV production value to esports, and Hill will primarily be working with the organization on their major events. ESL is working on a pay-per-view system for the bigger events, but no specific details on that were mentioned. However, an ESL spokesman did mention uh, to the score, which is where the story came from, es- uh, esports that there are currently no plans to initiate pay-per-view. They said there will be pay-per-view elements, but not full-on pay-per-view. The reason this is such a big story, though, is because it upset a lot of people in the industry, including myself. I didn't get any phone calls for this position. (laughs) Not one. And I've worked really hard to uh, make my name in esports. But you do have, like, Thorin, Richard Lewis, Red Eye... I could see where this pissed off a lot of people because it's basically like any other corporate job hiring a manager and they hired from the outside and not the same people who worked in. Anuj, you look fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go on this one. This is a definite clutch for me. This is awesome. Like, I love this. I love what they're doing here. I am in agreement with the hire here. I think you bring in a TV guy to boost TV production. As much as I love our Mr. Richard Lewis... Thorin, our, our favorite people around here. Um, th- you know, these guys have a point. I get it. Like, they're a little well, hurt about E-League. not being asked. Do you not think E-League was ran properly for TV? I think anything can be done better. And if you bring in an expert and somebody who has the knowledge of the TV industry, maybe how to make it more viewer-friendly, he will see things in a different light than everybody having the same opinion coming from within the industry. So... I think it's great. I think this is a story that's going to come back up. And he's just the boss, man, right? There's no... What's stopping him from hiring the same exact people that were doing all that, right? He, he definitely could. He'll he'll bring in the right talent around him. He knows what works. You give him a chance. It's not like this is a, a lifetime hire here. No, because, I mean, if you want to look at... We already have our Joe Buck. It's Anders, yeah. right? Like, that's... It's done. You have Anders in CSGO. Toby won in Dota. You have... I think Kriparian and Hearthstone, you know, you, you have all these people in their respective esports that are the the Terry Bradshaw or the you know the on fire crew in general has kind of taken that spot. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I think people might have jumped a little bit to conclusion to, to conclusions when they saw this, thinking like it was ESL going over say the the top guys like Richard Lewis or all them. But obviously ESL, I'm sure ESL did not have meetings about this and their names never come up. These guys are still going to be talent in the scene. That's what I'm saying. They're not going to disappear. Just because you can run a host or do a desk or you're an analyst does not mean you know TV production. ESL wanted TV production, so what did they do? They went out and got an expert in TV production. Uh, Hill has... Hill, for example, some things on his resume, is best known for being uh, as a senior vice president of 20th Century Fox, is the first president of Fox Sports from 93 to 94. Hill recently produced the last season of American Idol, the 88th Academy Awards, and won an Emmy for producing the 2011 World Series. Brad, how was the last season of American Idol? What's American Idol? Don't lie. What do you think, Brad? What do you think? Are we clutching this or are you kicking? Well, dude, what did you say? Clutch, for sure. Big clutch. We'll talk about this again. We'll get to see how this plays out. We're going to see more angry analysts, I think, rear their head in this story. I think we're going to get a lot of fun out of this one. And I'm a definite clutch, too, because, I mean, esports is, they're putting their big boy pants on. Like, it's, it's go time. You need to bring in somebody like this. Like you said, um, 
No, he's produced all those shows, World Series, an Academy Award, Fox NFL Sunday, NHL on Fox. He's done, he, he's a man of many hats. So the fact that these guys are saying, you're bringing this outsider from eSports, what does he know? Um, He's made he's stuff got some skins badass. On the wall. He's got some skins on the and, wall. And they're, they're not all the same deal. He's a creative mind. He can adapt to this new this new you know thing called esports and, and cs i mean now is the time to bring in somebody like this because you have these big investors you have all this money being thrown around you need a you need a guy that knows how to make something successful and i think this is the guy to do it anuj real quick just want to add something to that if you look at the numbers for the e-league major they still outnumbered it like what two to one on twitch views compared to tv views I think that's why you bring in somebody like this because in the long term here, you know, TNT and these guys are going to want this to be broadcasted on the network primarily and get the viewership there. And that's why you bring in somebody like this to help flip those numbers or at least balance them out and, and grow it from a television standpoint. So, And you know what? If you're nervous about this outside guy coming in, do better, bro. Like, So you both say clutch. And I'm going to say kick. Reason being is because I don't think this story is relevant to anyone other than people working in the industry. And even then, like we said, Richard Lewis to Thorin, Sir Scoots, Red Eye, Toby One, anyone. They are not TV executives. That's why you didn't get the job. You're, that's not your position. Like, I don't get upset at my job when they bring in somebody else to do HR or whatever. I'm not HR. That makes perfect sense. Would I have wanted to be manager and, and do it? Sure. Yeah, what, that, that's fine. But this is just a normal business move. I think it will be water under the bridge once it all works out and he starts hiring people. You know, he's they're going to go with the talent in the industry yeah. now. He's just the boss, man. Yeah. That's all. It's it's a clutch hire, though, by ESL. Oh, it is. It's yeah. it's definitely them letting everyone know we're, we got the big guy and, and come at us. But at the same time, like, how many times do you think, you know what? My boss is pretty smart. My boss knows what he's doing. Never. No one thinks that. So what would be the difference in esports for them to be happy about it? This story will not continue from the drama aspect, in my opinion. We'll know more about this story based on the production value that we see long term. I think that's how this story is going to continue, not so much the drama that we hear from analysts and, and right. things of that sort. So you're clutching the potential of this being, the higher. Yeah. Okay. What he produces at right. the end of the day, what, what okay. the outcome is here. Okay. I respect that. We mentioned earlier about uh, that soccer team buying Fnatic. What was the soccer team in age? AS Roma. There you go. They're not the only sports franchise to get involved. The Boston Bruins, or I should say TD Garden, Delaware North, a parent company of both, has invested into Splice because what esports team says I need to get in that? Then Splice. I mean, it, same it, color scheme almost. Yeah. I mean, that's big. Not big in CS, but other sports, like other esports. They're pretty big. Financial terms of the deals were not disclosed, uh, but Delaware, Delaware North intends to use resources from the Bruins and TD Garden in the development sales and marketing of esports. In what is the most generic, out of touch, rich person talking about esports, Delaware North stated that they're always looking for the emerging market. TD Garden president Amy Latimer told ESPN. We have sales teams and sponsors, sponsorships and ticket sales. We have a marketing engine, social. We have an arena to host events. It was an ideal partnership because we already have some of the basic elements. I'm pretty sure she says that about everything she invests in. That is the most generic statement I have ever heard. Do you think she has ever heard of esports before? I don't think so. Uh, here's this again saying that they think having a home team, now I do agree with this, this is what I love, is they said, I think having a home team and having the TD Garden as the home facility, and we want to make it one of the toughest places to play in. Truly, we think we bring all of those elements here, 
For us, it's really just adding another Boston sports teams to the landscape. And then, it, you know, all that where Splice intends to work more around the Boston market and all that. Like, Splice is also getting... The only reason Splice agreed to this, well, not the only reason, but one of the big reasons is they wanted to stay in the Northeast. Because they're in New York right now, and they wanted to stay over there. That's kind of like where their fan base is already. All right, I'll start with you. Clutch or kick, but I don't want to say clutch or kick on this. I want to say clutch or kick in general, these big sports teams who invest into esports. Is this a big deal or is it just rich people invest? We've talked about it before on the show. Is this just rich people doing what rich people do and that's investing into something? No, I'm going to I'm going to clutch this because <laughs> it is a big deal. It is a big deal. I mean, all of these big franchises, you got the Heat, the Bruins, AC Roma, all these big, you know, all these big successful businesses, sports franchises, they see a product and they see a profit. And yeah, I'm going to clutch the heck out of this because I, I'm, I'm glad that these, you know, rich people are coming in and, and, uh, you know, taking over these franchises. It's only going to make the sport better. And I kind of dig, and we talked about this during um, uh, the last major, having a venue, like an arena, like having CS in an arena where you can get the lighting right, the production value and all that. Like I'm, I'm clutching the heck out of sweet ass boot camp like North. Yeah, right. <sighs> Playing in the soccer stadium over there. Yeah, I that's mean, the way to do it. So yeah, I'm I'm a definite clutch on this one. Anuj, I'm about to big shot Bob this. If you don't know who that is, slide into my DMs. I'll let you know. I am going with the super clutch here. The super clutch. The super clutch on this one. This is like the Hiko of clutches right now. I think this is a match made in heaven for sports organizations to get into the esports world. I know you said her statement was generic, but I think it's true. You have the marketing power, you have the facilities, you have the know-how how to manage a sports organization. Eventually, we will talk about sports, esports going into more of a union setup. I think they know how to manage that as well. They'll be able to help them in all aspects. You're going to see more sports-like contracts, which are going to help esports by having more set teams and us getting to know the team versus just always just following a single player. So I think it's just a huge clutch all the way around. I would love to see this happen with more sports teams. I know the Sixers also got involved mm -hmm. um, with, Dignitas. with Dignitas. So I think that's that's great. Also, I'm a huge like sports fan. You know, it's not just esports with me. So to get to tie franchises, Whoa, okay. he's a big you know, sports fan. Though. Starting a new podcast tomorrow. Um, just to be able to tie sports franchises and esports, I think, um, can help unite the blend of people ragging on esports the way they do right now. You know, you see any type of ESPN headline on oh my an god, app, it's just read the comment just section. Flaming. It's, it's just, just flaming on esports and why is this posted? I think this will help bridge that gap a little bit, but I think they're set up to just to be successful. You know, like I said, the venue is one of the biggest thing and the marketing power is, you know, probably more important than the venue even. So it's a match made in heaven. So. And I think it's also good that it's in Boston because if there's any group of people that will just love anything because it says Boston on it, Bostonians. it's Bostonian. Oh, yeah. So I, typically I'm cynical on this, but I'm going to say clutch as well. <laughs> Normally I'm cynical about like the investors and everything just because I know they're not doing it because they, they give a damn about esports or anything. But I do like this because their backing power is the main reason for this was to get another team in Boston. We want this to be a city's team. We want this to be Boston where flip side to where um, the 76ers bought Dignitas. They even kind of said in their statement that they want to keep them separate. Like we don't want this to be associated with the 76ers really. We're just investors. And that's really been slow moving, which is another reason why it irks me. Because you get these investors who invest, but then it's just slow getting it going. Like, what are you doing? And yeah, like how long does it, like did it toss? All they did was not, you know, they, they kicked off the the original roster, which became North. Where have you been? You just What's had all these on? roster moves yeah. and you have all this money. Don't you think you probably could have picked up Hiko and made this super team. And Dignitas has been a prominent team for a long time, so it's, it's a weird, weird not just seeing not them. seeing them in the scene. I agree. And th same thing like with Echo Fox, where they're, they've they kind of dropped off. And I know they don't have a sports franchise, but they have sports tie-ins with 
Rick Fox and everything. It'll take one person to do it right for this to have yeah. like a you know just a following I think, trail. I think one of the issues is for these these investors and everything is it's a delicate balance of do we want to force big sports onto esports or do we want to appreciate it for what it is? Yeah. And I think that's kind of the where we're seeing this where I think 76ers are more so hey let's treat this like it's an esport and we'll handle it behind the scenes where Boston Bruins are like no we're going to get them in the TD Garden we're going to make this Boston's team and we're going to make Boston care about Splice which thank god because someone has to so we got what Clutcher Kick there one more story one more story on Clutcher Kick and the only reason I bring this up is because I'm not only going to kick it spoiler alert I'm going to ban hammer it I'm going to find its IP address and I'm going to obliterate it from my server NBA and Take Two team launch their league, if you will. Do you know what the league is called? I don't even want to say it because it's it's a it's ridiculous. So the background story is the NBA and 2K Sports are teaming up to make a league for NBA 2K, and this is not going to be just like your normal league. It's going to be where every team in the NBA has a team of players. Okay, NBA Adam. Uh, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver tells CNBC that everyone's on equal footing in the league. It's just a question of how good of a gamer you are. So <laughs> just just be a good gamer, guys, and yeah. then you can do this. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, and make the Suns great again. It will be a league <laughs> that will launch in 2018. Teams in the league will be operated by each of the NBA's 30 franchises and will follow a tournament format similar to the NBA. So with playoffs and all that, the league, NBA 2K E League. I was gonna guess that. You know that you should have given us the opportunity when you yeah. said that. That's, that's what, what went through my mind. That's what they called it, NBA 2K E League. It's original. Yeah, real original. There, I feel like uh, <laughs> feel like that's gonna become a complication later on. Maybe not. Maybe I don't know how the legal things work in there. But so now we have the NBA 2K E League. I ask you, Anuj, do real sport games, so NBA, FIFA, right? That has some dom, you know, prominence in esports. Madden has it. Do real sports interest you at all as an esport? I'm gonna go with clutch on this. Whoa! I know, I know. Especially when you said you're gonna throw the ban hammer down on it, I probably just lost this this battle of clutch or kick. But my reasoning behind it. Again, we're promoting esports here. I think Adam Silver, first of all, for those of you that don't know, um, in my opinion, is the best commissioner in all of sports. I think hey, them. Gary being... Bettman might say something. Oh, please, <laughs> Gary Bettman is Can't hanging out with, with a straight face. Right no, no right. but I think you know they're they're promoting esports, and just like Madden has its huge fan base, FIFA. Brett, you and I were talking about FIFA, how much we enjoy playing that. It's got. So you know, much again, wasted on that. Oh my god, I love FIFA. I just love FIFA. So I love the fact that soccer teams are getting involved in this. Mm -hmm. But again, they're promoting promoting esports. I'm never gonna hate on that. I might not watch it. You know, again, look at something like Hearthstone. It might not be something that I follow very closely. But if they're investing in it, they're taking the time to promote it. They're doing it properly. Will be the main thing. You know, you make it official and make it feel right then hey, all for you, keep doing your thing, keep keep jamming away, and let's go. Brett, save it. <sighs> I, am, I am about to dunk on this so hard. This is a kick for me. Here, here's an idea, 2K. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Come in close. How about fix your game before you create a league? Hey, and, and oh, by the way, I... Any any esport, esport quote unquote esport that has chance involved, I'm not down with because I could be wide open for a three point shot and be like, oh, this is money, this is money. I'm about I'm about to be you know half a million dollars richer, brick. And then it just because because the game decided that you know what, Brett, I didn't want you to make that shot. Or in Madden, you know what, Brett. I didn't want Antonio Brown to catch that pass. That wide open pass that no one's near him on. I'm I'm a kick. I, I just can't get down with watching other people play sports games. I 
What about getting Wh CS goad? I want no, I, to but be. There's some skill involved. In I that. want I mean, to be like a nuge where I'm just I accept everything for esports because I just love esports, and that's kind of where I sit like with mobile. I definitely want to do a mobile esports, and where does mobile esports have a a place? You know, like Vanglory or there's some FPS. There's some FPS shooters even out there on the mobile that. You know, has some following. It has some tournaments. Yeah, they're hitting Don't me up give on Twitter all the time. <laughs> Don't give away next week's uh, clutch or kick. There, so party. I definitely want to talk about mobile <laughs> esports and and everything there. And I don't want to stick my nose up to that. I understand that those have a following. I do stick my nose up though to real sport games in esports. They they interest me none. I don't care about them. If I want to watch someone play soccer, I'm going to go watch an actual person play soccer. I cannot watch real terrorists and counter terrorists plant bombs and shoot people. I cannot do that. <laughs> and much like how Brett was saying, like, I just feel like there's a disconnect when I'm watching Madden and I don't see the skill. I know there's skill. I know there's thought in it. I just don't see it. Time out. Time out. We just. But we have to end the show now. We just savage on people. That post on ESPN's feed. Oh, I'm that. Yeah, for, I'm that person for making fun of it. And now we're turning around and doing the same thing here. All right, all right, suck all right, it, all right, all right. jocks. Totally not the same <laughs> thing, but okay. Almost right. the same thing. No, it no, feels no. close. Definitely not. I just don't. I don't get it. You I said don't you get, don't see the skill in the game. I don't no, get no, the no, no, appeal. No, I'm not saying, no, I understand yeah. that there. A professional Madden player could probably destroy me in Madden. I suck at not Madden. Probably he would. FIFA. Brett, well, you know, I don't this. know a new yeah, skill because I don't know what you're about. with their logic here, as long as I'm a good gamer, I can succeed in this league. Are we good? And gamers? I'm a pretty good gamer. We, we play a lot of games. I would be what you would call Gold Nova, a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just it's weird to me. <sighs> I'll, I won't watch it. I'm not gonna lie to you, Nuge. I, I'll watch it for the sake of the show. I won't like it. I didn't say I was watching it. I just said I'm happy. For I know, the scene. but we're we're gonna give it a shot. That's they say it's gonna be on TV and ESPN and all that. So you lightened up on your ban hammer uh, stance there a little bit. I see. I feel. No, it's still banned. I will still ban it. I still see you kicking it, but it's just like more of a tap, tap a tap a tap. No, no it's definitely this kick. is this is a tomahawk slam, posterized my I don't nuts in your. Face, I don't slander. like it. No, I don't like it at all. I'm going <laughs> pro in 2K, boys. Whatever. So Good let's luck. tally Have up the score that. here. Anuj, you were way out in ahead. Like I felt pretty confident in your chances of winning clutch or kick on episode 50 on the milestone episode where we have 10,000 downloads. This will probably have like 10,000 in itself. And then you just let it go with that last one. So Brett, congratulations. You are now the clutch or kick champion. <laughs> This might be the proudest moment of my life. You're a father, I'd bro. Like to, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a close second. This is a definite first. It's it's clutch or kick, the birth of my son, and then marrying my beautiful, beautiful wife. <laughs> She's not going to listen to this episode. No, so. there's not a chance in hell any of our wives listen to this. Not, she, does, she doesn't even know what I'm doing right now. Especially this far into the episode. And speaking this far into the episode... It was definitely a long one, but it's definitely appreciated that you stuck around with us this whole time. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we sure did. We actually had some production value, like I've been saying that we were going to get here in a while. But it's because we're in the, the other studio. Of right? The undisclosed The undisclosed location. location. We're in a different studio in the same location. But it's much nicer with newer equipment, so we can do a little bit more fun with it. And I hope you did have fun as a listener of the Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Episode 50 in the books. Boys, did you think it was worth it? Oh, yeah. Good milestone episode. Good Best episode 50. Best episode ever. I agree with that one. Follow the show on Twitter. At the Center Ring. You can follow all of us individually on Twitter. Just go to at the Center Ring. Hit that follow button. And all of our information is right there in a pinned tweet. There's no point in going over, over it. Get involved in the show. We're always active on our Discord. There's a little link on there, again, on our Twitter to join. We are there. We have actually more and more listeners joining every day. Maybe every week. 
Every, maybe like every once week. a month we yeah. get a new <laughs> person. But you're all beautiful. But they're coming. Yeah. Oh, they're getting in there, so you better hurry up. <laughs> Again, at the center ring. I want to thank everyone for listening. Again, share the the show. Let's get to ten thousand in this episode. Like I right just, now. I just want to crush that that milestone of ten thousand and just get it done right now. Again, we will be back next week. From what I understand, a nuge won't be. Is this like a depends on the day Trump that we do it? Immigration thing. I have ninety days, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do. Damn dog. I know, it's rough, dude. You don't even know what it's like for me. You know what? I'm going to try and make it. If we can do it before the first, all right, I can be we'll, on the next we'll show. We'll look at our schedule. Hopefully, we can get it in before the first. If not. Me and Brett will be here next week breaking down I am Katowice. Maybe talk some Overwatch, talk some meta, unless a nude you want to be here for that. We'll figure it out. To be honest, the shows sound like we're really prepared. We don't figure it out until like an hour before on what we're actually (laughs) talking about. So You'll get 2K production value around here. We'll get that going here. Right. We're going to hire... See... You're coming on the kick side. Yeah, there you go. All right. I just wanted to join the team. We'll be back next week while we search for our new executive producer i was thinking about maybe going to serious radio and hiring someone for our production until then thank you everyone for listening to episode 50 of the center ring check us out on twitter at the center ring and of course on our website tcr.gg until then take it easy and thank you so much for listening episode 50